video, we showed you how you could build your own ribbon cable so that you can link two Arduinos together and program uh, the bootloader onto blank at, at Mega Chips. Let's take a look at now how we actually get that bootloader onto the chip. The programming method that we're going to use to install this bootloader requires two Arduinos. Now, maybe you don't have two Arduinos. Maybe you only have one. But chances are, you know someone else that has an Arduino. And the two of you can get together, hook your two boards up together, and program chips if that's what you want to do. The cable that we built before has male plugs on one end that plugs into the upstream Arduino. And then we have this female connection that we created to go into the six ICSP pins that are male pins on the downstream Arduino. If you don't have one of these cables, that doesn't mean you still can't do this. But there is a new problem that we're looking at. The new problem is that you need to be able to connect from these female headers here to these male headers over here. And the jumper wires that you have to work with might not let you do that very easily. There's something you need to know. And that is that every one of these six pins right here on the ICSP connection has a corresponding female header, header hole here on these. So you can use ordinary jumper wires between the two boards to accomplish the same thing. Let's take a quick look at that. If you want to use the spaghetti method, all you have to do is tie pin 13 here with pin 13 there. 12 over here goes to 12 over there. 11 over here goes to 11 over here. And then finally, pin 10 over here goes to the reset pin on the downstream Arduino. And of course, we need to link 5 volts and ground together between the two boards. Now we need to make our upstream Arduino look like an SPI programmer. The good news is there's a sketch already written that'll do that for us. Load up your IDE, in the file menu, go to examples, slide over and find Arduino ISP. We want to load that sketch. Let's send that down to our board. There we go. Now you're going to need to find some software to install on your computer to do this burning. You can search for Arduino bootloaders and find various sites. The one I recommend, though, I found it very easy and helpful, was one that's on the sparkfun.com website. If you simply go to sparkfun.com and in their search menu, search on reinstalling bootloader. And you should be able to come up with this tutorial right here. I'm running a Windows machine here, so there's two files that I need to download. There's the Arduino Opti bootloader, and then WinAVR. There's also an option here for the Mac users to get the AVR they need for that computer. Download these two files, then create a folder on your computer, and unzip the files into that folder. We won't talk about how to do that now. If you don't know how to download files and unzip files, you probably won't be trying to install a bootloader on a microchip. Obviously, this works, but it can be a little tedious. When you're in the command window, when you're in DOS, you have to be sure that you type everything exactly the way it's supposed to be. And uppercase letters have to be uppercase. Lowercase letters have to be lowercase. There's not a lot of room for error. And unfortunately, you can't just copy the text off of one screen, say the web browser's page, and paste it into your DOS window. That's not going to work. So let me show you how we can do this in another way. We're going to use something called Notepad. You can look for Notepad in your Start menu under the Accessories topic. It's a real handy little text editor. You might also find one called WordPad, but I prefer Notepad. Anything you do in Notepad is going to be just clean text. There won't be any hidden characters, nothing that tells the computer how to format the text, or what colors to use, or what fonts to use. We want to be able to send just pure text, and Notepad's going to let us do that. We'll start by copying the first command line that we're going to need. 
I'll highlight it here on their web page, and then I'll use Command C to copy it. Then we'll go over to Notepad, and with Command V, I will paste it. We have to make one change to this line. You see right here where it says Comport? We're supposed to put in our actual COM port here, the one we use with our Arduino. Let's see what we've got. It says here that I'm using COM4, so we need to put that in this position over here. It might be different on yours, so be sure you get the right one. This line is going to pass several parameters to the AVR Dude program. Let's take a look at them. Dash capital P is the COM port that we're using, COM port 4. Dash lowercase b is the baud rate. Dash lowercase c is the programmer type. Dash lowercase p is the microprocessor that we're actually programming. Dash v tells AVR Dude to use verbose output. We're going to come back to this one here in a little bit. Dash E says, hey, let's erase the chip in case anybody was on there before. We'll get it completely clean. And then we have three more settings that set the fuses on our chip. Now, fuses, yeah, fuses are like configuring the chip at the lowest level. What kind of clock are we using? We want to tell it we have an external clock things like that that it needs to know so that we can actually start putting a hex code in in the next command. The first time I tried this, I was actually typing in the command window. I did everything carefully, got it exactly the way it was supposed to be, hit enter, and then among others, I got this error. It said the programmer was out of sync. I pasted the error message into the Google search engine and Sure enough, I found out that a lot of people were getting this error. There were several suggestions. One of them that I tried involved placing a 110-ohm uh, resistor between the reset pin, and I think it was pin 3. Um, I didn't have a 110-ohm resistor, so I used two 220-ohm uh, resistors, put them in parallel. That, that's the same as 110 ohms. That didn't do anything. It got exactly the same results. Then I found another page where they suggested putting a capacitor in here. So I parked a capacitor in here, and that seemed to improve things quite a bit. I started to see a lot more on the screen, but it did end in the end with a failure saying it was out of sync. So I did some more searching. The third solution I found worked very well. And ironically, it was right here on the same web page where I was getting my instructions. It was a comment that someone had posted. It has to do with this dash V here in our command line. That dash V says that we want a verbose listing. We want AVR Dude to tell us everything it's doing. Well, the poster said that, hey, if we add a second V, it tells us what it's doing twice. If we add a third one, we'll see everything three times. And if you make it four Vs instead of one, ABR dude has to tell us everything it's doing four times. And while it's taking all this time telling us what it's doing, our little Arduino is able to keep up and we get a success. So let's do a real quick recap here. We copied and pasted the line from the SparkFrom page into Notepad. We changed the COM port to our COM port on mine, it's COM4. And we changed our dash V to dash V, 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 V. Now, how are we going to get this into our command window? We're going to use a little trick from our old days in DOS. It's called a batch file. A batch file is a simple text file that allows you to put things that you do over and over again into one simple file. And then instead of having to type it again and again, all you have to do is type in the name of the batch file, and it will do all the typing for you. Now, as we said before, programming this bootloader is going to be a two-step process. This covers the first step, getting the fuses right and erasing the chip. The next step actually puts the hex code on. 
we're going to put the instructions to do that in our batch file as well. But we're going to take advantage of a simple little DOS command that will make it easy for us to take a breath in between and make sure first line was executed successfully. We can check the screen to see if there's any errors. So I'm just going to put in the word pause here. That's a DOS command that will stop everything and wait for us to press a key on the keyboard before it will continue. Well, let's get on with part two. Now I'm going to capture the second command line that we need. Here it is here. I'm going to do you guys a favor. I will take this whole thing and paste it into the comments under this video so you'll be able to copy and paste them right there. Remember, you'll have to put in your own COM ports along the way. So I have highlighted it. Command C, I'll copy it. We'll go back over to our notepad with Command V. I'll paste it in. We're going to make two changes to this line too. First of all, we've got to put our COM port in again as we did before. And over here where it says hex file name, we need to actually put the file name of the hex file that we downloaded and unzipped. I would like to make this a little bit simpler. So I'm going to make up a new name for that file. I'll show you what I'll do with it. So I think I'll just call it boot file. So we're going to be flashing a file named bootfile.hex onto our, um, our Arduino chip. Here's the folder that I unzipped earlier. We look for the hex file. Here it is in there. It's got this long name, the revision number. It's got 328 on it, so obviously it's for our chip. I'm going to just make a copy of that file and then quickly paste it down here. So we'll have two identical files here. Then I'm going to take the one that I just pasted in here and change its name to boot file. So now we have a file called boot file hex. And it's the same as the one that we installed. So if later we find a newer revision, we want to put it in here, we can see the old name. But our batch file over here is going to use this new name. And we won't have to change our batch file. It'll stay the same. Now, I, again, I want to know if everything worked right so that I'm going to I'm going to put the pause in here. Oh, and did I say we're going to make two changes? I think we better make three. This guy again. We want it to make sure that it, we stay in sync with everything. So the next step here would be to save this file. Then I'll show you how we can execute it. I'm going to add one more thing to the file. You don't need this. Uh, it, it, I'm putting it in simply because I need to adjust my screen and everything for the video. So before it starts doing anything, I'm going to ask it to pause. Now watch how I turn this into a batch file. You go in the File menu and select Save As. You want to be sure that you're going to save the file in the same folder where your hex file is and all the other support files there. So I've already got that path in here. Now we'll give the file a name. I'll call it install bootloader. And then we want to put the extension .bat, short for batch, or bat, like in Batman. That's the extension. We'll save the file. And you'll see over here that we have our batch file here ready to use. Now, in order to program the chip, all we have to do is open or double click this file. But we're not ready to do that yet. We need to hook up our hardware. Let's start with a new chip. Got this one from Mouser Electronics. Now, this is our Atmega 328 chip. When you get a new chip like this, you'll see that the pins are kind of spread out a little bit. They're not going to just fit well into the socket here. So we need to bend them a little bit. And the easiest way to do that is to lay it on a hard surface and just kind of rock it a little bit. 
We'll do that on both sides. Try not to go too far. It's better to do it once or twice. Then we'll do it a little more. Let's skip ahead a little bit here. It takes a little patience and a few tries to get these pins so that they'll line up right, but, but you'll get it. When you go to install this pin in the board, you want to be sure that the notch that you see here on the end of the pin matches up with the notch that's printed on the, end, on the edge of the board. We place our chip in here and press it in, making sure that all the pins are going in right the way they're supposed to be. So our downstream board is now loaded with a blank at Mega chip. The upstream board already has the cables on it, so I'll just bring this over and we'll plug it in. As I've said before, I make sure that the 5 volts and ground are on the outside and you probably have noticed that the LED has now come on on this board. Now things will happen quickly. I've opened up the folder where our batch file is located and I'm going to double click our batch file to launch it. Our DOS window opens up right here and it's paused because I wanted to make some adjustments on the screen before we go any further. So I'll get things set up the way I want to see them. Now when I press the space bar it's going to execute the first command line. We should see a bunch of text scrolling on the page. We see a lot of text go by here. That's because we're doing everything four times. So it says right here, AVR do done. Thank you. And it says press key to continue. When I press my space bar again, it will execute the second command. You see the lights blinking on both boards? Now the hex file is being loaded onto our chip. It just keeps going. It may take a little while. There we go. Done. Okay, let's unplug the boards. I'll remove power from the upstream Arduino. I'll remove the header from there. Let's power up the new one. It's up and running. Now this was our new chip and look there. It's running the original Blink program that comes along with the bootloader. We've got a new Arduino.